What other stuff would you like to see improved uh, about the Neuralink app and just the entire experience? I would like to, like I said, get back to the um, like click on demand, like the regular clicks. That would be great. Uh, I would like to be able to connect to more devices. Uh, right now, it's just the computer. I'd like to be able to use it on my phone or use it on different consoles, different uh, platforms. Um, I'd like to be able to control as much stuff as possible, honestly. Um, like an Optimus robot would be pretty cool. That would be sick if I could control an Optimus robot. Uh, the Link app itself, um, it seems like we are getting pretty um, dialed in to what um, it might look like down the road. Seems like we've gotten through a lot of what I want from it, at least. The only other thing I would say is like more control over all the parameters that I um, can tweak uh, with my like cursor and stuff. There's a lot of things that you know go into how the cursor moves in certain ways, um, and I have. I don't know, like three or four of those parameters, and there like might gain be gain and friction, and gain all that. friction, yeah. And there's maybe double the amount of those with just like velocity, and then with the actual dwell cursor. Um, so I would like all of it. I want as much control over my environment as possible. Um, especially, so you want like advanced mode, you know, like in like there's menus. Yeah. Usually, there's basic yep. mode, mm -hmm. and you're like one of those folks, like the, so I go the power user, and, advanced, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's Got it. that's that's what I want. I want as much control over this as possible. Um, so yeah, that's that's really all I can ask for. Just give me give me everything. <laughs> uh, has speech been useful? Like just being able to talk, also in addition to everything else. Yeah, you mean like while I'm using it? While you're using it, like speech to text. Oh yeah. Or do you yeah. type? Or like because there's also a keyboard. That's yeah, really yeah. Nice. So there's a virtual keyboard. That's another thing I would like to work more on is finding some way to. Um, type or text in a different way. Right now, it is um, like a dictation, basically, and a virtual keyboard that I can use with the cursor. But we've played around with um, like finger spelling, like sign language finger spelling, mm. um, and that seems really promising. So I have this thought in my head that it's going to be a very similar learning curve that I had with um, the cursor where I went from attempted movement to imagined movement at one point, mm -hmm. I have a feeling, um, this is just my intuition, that at some point I'm going to be doing finger spelling and I won't need to actually attempt to finger spell anymore, that I'll just be able to think the like letter that I want and it'll pop up. That would be epic. Yeah, and That's just, challenging, yeah, that's it, hard. That's a lot of work for you to kind of take that leap, but that would be awesome. And then like going from letters to words is another step like, you would go from, you know, right now it's finger spelling of like just the sign language alphabet. But if it's able to pick that up, then it should be able to pick up like the whole sign language, like language. Um, and so then if I could do something along those lines or just the sign language um, spelled word, if I can, you know, spell it at a reasonable speed and it can pick that up, then I would just be able to think that through and it would do the same thing. I don't see why not after what I saw with the um, with the cursor control, I don't see why it wouldn't work, but we'd have to play around with it more. What was the process in terms of like training yourself to go from attempted movement to imagined movement? Yeah. How long did that take? So like how long would this kind of process take? Well, it was a couple of weeks before it just like happened upon me. But now that I know that that was possible, I think I could make it happen with other things. I think it would be much, much simpler. Would you get an upgraded implant device? Sure, absolutely. Whenever, whenever they'll let me. <laughs> uh, so you don't have any concerns for you with the surgery experience? All of it was um, like no regrets. No. So everything's no. been good so far. Yep. You just keep getting upgrades. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> I've seen how much it's impacted my life already, yeah. and I know that everything from here on out is going to get better and better. So um, I would love to. I would love to get the upgrade. What uh, future capabilities? Uh, are you excited about sort of beyond this kind of uh, telepathy? Uh, is vision interesting? So for folks who, for example, who are blind, so Neuralink uh, enabling people to see or, or for speech? 
Yeah, there's a lot that's very, very cool about this. I mean, we're talking about the brain. So there's like, this is just motor cortex stuff. There's so much more that can be done. The vision one is fascinating to me. I think that is going to be very, very cool to give someone the ability to see for the first time in their life would just be, I mean, it it might be more amazing than even helping someone like me. Like that just sounds incredible. Um, the speech thing is really interesting, being able to have some sort of like real-time translation and um, cut away that language barrier would be really cool. Um, any sort of like actual impairments um, that it could solve, like with speech would be very, very cool. And then also there are a lot of different disabilities that all originate in the brain. And you would be able to hopefully be able to solve a lot of those. Um, I know there's already stuff to help people with seizures um, that can be implanted in the brain. This would do, I imagine, the same thing. And so you could do something like that. I know that you know even someone like Joe Rogan has talked about uh, the possibilities with being able to um, stimulate the brain in different ways. Um, I'm not sure... I'm not sure what, you know, like how ethical a lot of that would be. That's beyond me, honestly. But I know that there is a lot that can be done when we're talking about the brain and being able to go in and physically make changes to help people or to improve their lives. So I'm really looking forward to everything that comes from this. And I don't think it's all that far off. Um, I think a lot of this can be implemented within my lifetime. Um, assuming that I live a long life. What you were referring to is things like people suffering from depression or things yeah. of that nature potentially getting help. Yeah. Flip a switch like that, make someone happy. Um, I know, I think Joe has talked about it more in terms of like, you want to experience like what a drug trip feels like. Like you want to experience what yeah, you like yeah. to be on. Of course. Uh, yeah, mushrooms or something like that. DMT, like you can just flip that switch in the brain. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Bain has talked about being able to like wipe parts of your memory and re-experience things that like for the first time, like your favorite movie or your favorite book, like just wipe that out real quick and then re-fall in love with Harry Potter or something. Um, I told him, I was like, I don't know how I feel about like people being able to just wipe parts of your memory. Um, that seems a little sketchy to me. He's like, they're already doing it. So <laughs> sounds legit. Yeah. Uh, I would love memory replay. Just oh, like yeah. actually like high resolution replay of all memories. Yeah. I saw an episode of black mirror about that once. I don't think I want it. Yeah. So black mirror is always kind of considered the worst case, which is yeah. important. I think people don't, consider the best case or the average case enough. I don't know what it is about us humans. We want to think about the worst possible thing. Yeah. We love drama. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how is this new technology going to kill everybody? <laughs> we just love that. Well, we get like, yes, let's yeah. watch. Hopefully people don't think about that too much with me. It'll ruin a lot of my plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I assume you're going to have to take over yeah. the world. I mean, you're, I love your Twitter. You uh, you tweeted, I'd like to make jokes about hearing voices in my head since <laughs> getting the Neuralink, but I feel like people would take it the wrong way. Plus the voices in my head told me not to. Yeah. 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 Please never stop. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you were talking about Optimus. Um, is that something uh, you would love to be able to do to control the robotic arm or the entirety of Optimus? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure, absolutely. You think there's something like fundamentally different about just being able to physically interact with the world? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, um, this, I, I know another thing with like being able to like give people the ability to like feel sensation and stuff too, by going in with the brain and having the neural like maybe do that. That could be something that, um, could be translated through transferred through the Optimus as well. Like there's all sorts of really cool, um, interplay between that. And then also, like you said, just physically interacting. I mean, 99% of the things that I can't do myself, um, obviously need, I need a caretaker for someone to physically do things for me. If an Optimus robot could do that, like I could live an incredibly independent life and not be such a burden on those around me. Um, and that would, it would change the way people like me live, um, at least until whatever this is gets cured. Um, but being able to interact with the world physically like that would just be amazing. Um, 
and and they're not just like for being for having it be a caretaker or something, but something like I talked about, just being able to read a book. Uh, imagine Optimus Robot just being able to hold a book open in front of me, like get that smell again. I might not be able to feel it at that point, um, or maybe I could again with the sensation and stuff. But being there's something different about reading like a physical book than staring at a screen or listening to an audiobook. I actually don't like audiobooks. I've listened to a ton of them at this point, but I don't really like them. Um, I would much rather like read a physical copy. So one of the things you would love to be able to experience is opening the book, bringing it up to you yeah, and to feel the touch of the paper. Yeah. Oh man. The touch, the smell. I mean, it's just like just something about the words on the page and, you know, they've, they've replicated, you know, that page color on like the Kindle and stuff. Yeah. It's just not the same. Yeah. So just something as simple as that. 